Hey, it's Ed, and I'm back. Hopefully the uh, change my mind meme caught your attention. More so than the 400 CFM per ton did, but I don't know which one it is. Either way, you're here. So let's get right to it. 400 CFM per ton is a rule of thumb, period. No matter how you slice it, it is a rule of thumb. It's just like a suction line supposed to be beer can cold. It's a rule of thumb, right? A lot of people will puff their chest and brag about the cool tools they have to measure super heat and subcooling. They're real precise with their charge. But then the next thing that comes out of their pie hole is 400 CFM per ton. 400 CFM per ton is the equivalent of beer can cold. It's the same thing as your friction rate's always supposed to be 0.1. If you guys are familiar with using a duck slide, often called a duculator, and I'm moving it because I'm seeing a whole bunch of glare. Hopefully you can see that. You don't arbitrarily set it at 0.1. That is another bad rule of thumb. It's like using a non-contact voltage tester to confirm a circuit is open or closed or using it to troubleshoot systems. That's a bad idea. 500 square foot per ton or 400 or whatever it is where you live. Here's another one. Rules of thumb. They are no good. Your airflow is supposed to be based off of your sensible heat ratio. We look at our sensible gain. We look at our latent gain. We look at our total gain. And look at that. I forgot to write gain after latent. Oh, well. I don't have to go back and fix it. But I don't want to. But our total gain was 24,000 BTUs. Where did we get that? Well, we used ACA's manual, J. That simple. Uh, I don't know if I physically want to use a manual to do this. I'd be looking at using one of the software programs that are readily available. Uh, you got your quick model and some Elite and WriteSoft and some uh, easily accessible stuff. And if you want to do it basically for free, there's always cool calc. Manual Less is the specific book that's going to give us the guidance on how to use that sensible and total to determine what our airflow is supposed to be. Our system's airflow is going to be based off of the sensible heat ratio of the structure. We used Manual J to determine our total, our sensible, and our latent. So to solve for our sensible heat ratio, we divide our sensible gain by our total gain. If our total gain was 24,000, our sensible gain was 18,000, it would look as shown with 18,000 being divided by 24,000, which equals 0.75 or a sensible heat ratio of 0.75. I mean, 75% of the gain or the heat coming into the house is sensible. The remainder of the other 25% would be latent. Moisture, water, you know, that stuff. 0.75 represents a house that is fairly leaky. Manual S gives us this nice chart for us to ballpark, and yeah, ballpark, our cooling CFM. Our total being 24,000 with 22,000 BTUs of sensible gain, we see that our sensible heat ratio is significantly higher than in the previous example. That 0.91 sensible heat ratio is indicative of a house that is reasonably tight. Not crazy tight, not super nuclear. Uh, we gasketed and foamed everything in sight. But uh, average or a little bit better, I'm going to say a modern code compliant house should come up with a sensible heat ratio in that general vicinity. Our sensible BTUs, when we look at them, our sensible BTUs are the BTUs, which again dictates our airflow. So in the example where we had the 24,000 total with a 0.75 sensible heat ratio, or 18,000, or it says 18K, 18,000 
sensible be to use, the math would go as follows. 18,000 divided by 1.1 times 22. 1.1 is a number that is in the formula that is always there. Uh, maybe I'll do an, another example where I get into the detail of it, but for right now, let's just stick with the 1.1. The next bullet point down shows that the way we do the math, it's algebra, I guess. Um, we have to do the 1.1 times the 22 and then divide the product of that into the number on top or prior to. So we have 1.1 times 22 is going to give us 24.2. So we're going to take that 24.2 and divide it into the 18,000. Our target airflow in this instance is going to be 743 CFM. Not 400 CFM per ton, but our target in this example, and this would be a relatively leaky house, our target airflow would be 743. Now, the ACA design series or manual S specifically isn't that wound up that you, that's the number they want you to hit. They go plus or minus 15%. You see the 631 to 854, that's the range we want to fall within. So what we're going to do is take the extended performance data, application data, product literature, whatever your manufacturer calls the numbers that represent the total sensible and latent capacities at various airflows. We're going to find a piece of equipment that meets the sensible, meets the latent. It doesn't exceed the total by 15, 20 or 30 percent, depending on what compressor technology we're talking about. And falls within these numbers. It's really that simple. So over here, this is the actual chart where we would pull that uh, 22 degree delta T off of. Our sensible heat ratio is less than 0.8, so therefore our target delta T is 22. In comparison to, we have 22,000 BTUs of sensible gain on this example. Still 24,000 BTUs total, just like the previous example. And I'm not going to go through the math as detailed on this one. But we do the 1.1 times our 18 degree delta T. And it's uh, when you finish the, the math, it ends up being 1111 CFM is our target, not 400 CFM per ton. So we end up with a spread somewhere between 944 and 1277. Again, the chart shows us where our delta t or td as it's listed on the chart comes from and it's because our sensible heat ratio is above 0.85 so 400 cfm per ton isn't always the answer um, something else generally is and i want to emphasize we size our ducts based off of sensible btus not total btus we don't use 400 cfm per ton arbitrarily i guess that didn't come out as easy as i wanted it to but we should use math, right? We don't arbitrarily use 0.1 friction rates. We measure superheat and subcooling. We use a real voltmeter instead of something that lights up when it sees the lines of flux. And we can do better. If you want to argue about it with me, I'm all for it. But if you want to know how to do it following the guidance of the design series, which is uh, part of code compliancy, at least in the markets that I work in. And the markets I work in can be anywhere from Florida to New Hampshire, uh, from the East Coast to the West Coast. So with that, I'm done. Uh, you want more information about this? Uh, let me know. I got to find a button to hit stop.